Imagine a world where creatures that disappeared centuries or even millennia ago once again walk among us. That idea, which once sounded like science fiction worthy of films like Jurassic Park, is now getting closer to reality. With advances in genetics, cloning, and biotechnology, scientists around the globe are studying ways to bring back extinct animals, from the imposing woolly mammoth that roamed the icy tundras to birds like the dodo and the passenger pigeon, both emblematic symbols of human-driven extinction. But is reviving extinct species really possible? And more importantly, should we do it? That is exactly what we are going to see here today. The Tasmanian tiger was an extinct carnivorous marsupial that resembled a tiger or a wolf, and it is currently at the center of intense scientific discussions about de-extinction. Its extinction occurred mainly due to hunting motivated by bounties offered by farmers, along with habitat loss and disease. The last specimen died in captivity in 1936. Colossal Biosciences, which already works on the woolly mammoth and other de-extinction projects, joined forces with the University of Melbourne and created a laboratory with an initial investment of $5 million United States dollars. The strategy involves editing the DNA of a closely related living species, in this case the fat-tailed dunnert, a small marsupial, so that its cells genetically resemble those of the Tasmanian tiger, including about 300 specific modifications. According to Andrew Pask, the first hybrid pups could be born within one decade. Colossal, more optimistically, suggests that this could happen sooner, taking inspiration from its progress with other extinct species. The woolly mammoth is a legendary giant of the Ice Age that has fascinated both scientists and the public, and today features as a protagonist in de-extinction initiatives. The woolly mammoth was an extinct relative of modern elephants, adapted to cold climates with dense fur, small ears, and fat deposits to withstand low temperatures. It lived from about 300,000 years ago until approximately 10,000 years ago. Its well-preserved remains in Siberia and the Arctic have allowed detailed analyses of DNA, skin, food, and much more. Because of this, Colossal Biosciences, founded by George Church and Ben Lamb, expects to promote the de-extinction of the woolly mammoth, using techniques such as gene editing to insert mammoth traits into Asian elephants. The plan is to create a mammophant, an elephant genetically modified with traits such as thick fur, subcutaneous fat, and cold resistance. The ambitious goal is to produce a calf by the end of 2028, using stem cells and, potentially, gestation in an artificial womb. The passenger pigeon was once the most numerous bird species in North America and has now become the focus of de-extinction projects. Before the 19th century, the passenger pigeon was the most abundant bird in North America, with estimates ranging between 3 and 5 billion individuals, representing up to 40% of the region's entire bird population. This drastic decline occurred due to intense commercial hunting, driven by the demand for cheap meat, and habitat destruction through accelerated deforestation. The combination of these factors led to the species' extinction in the early 20th century. The project to revive this animal is led by the organization Revive and Restore. The idea is not to clone the original passenger pigeon, that would be impossible due to degraded DNA in specimens. Instead, key passenger pigeon genes will be edited into the DNA of the band-tailed pigeon, its closest living relative, to create a bird with similar traits. The initial goal was to produce the first offspring by 2025, but the timeline was adjusted, with a functional captive bird now expanding expected to emerge between 2029 and 2032, with possible progressive reintroduction into the wild. The northern white rhinoceros is, in fact, functionally extinct. Only two females remain, both unable to reproduce naturally. To save the species, the two females' eggs were collected and fertilized with preserved semen from deceased males, such as Sudan, Sunni, and others, resulting in 30 viable embryos currently stored in liquid nitrogen in Italy and Germany. In 2023, a crucial breakthrough was achieved. Researchers from the BioRescue Consortium successfully implanted an embryo into a southern white rhinoceros a closely related subspecies named Kura. Although Kura died after 70 days of gestation due to an infection caused by bacteria activated by flooding, the discovery of a viable embryo during the autopsy represents a valuable proof of concept for future applications. Scientific teams are also exploring the conversion of northern white rhinoceros skin cells into induced pluripotent stem cells, which can be used to generate sperm and eggs artificially, a valuable alternative to the scarcity of available genetic material. 
The dodo, the iconic extinct bird of the Mascarene Islands, is frequently featured in discussions about de-extinction. The dodo was a flightless bird endemic to the Mascarene Islands, extinct in the 17th century due to a combination of hunting, habitat destruction, and, most notably, the introduction of predators such as rats, pigs, and monkeys to the islands. Colossal Biosciences, a United States biotechnology company, is once again at the forefront of the dodo de-extinction project. The company has already obtained the bird's genome from ancient DNA in museum specimens. The process involves comparing the dodo's genome with that of the Nicobar pigeon, its closest living relative. They will make use of primordial germ cells, called primordial germ cells (PGCs). In birds, these cells can be edited in the laboratory. In the case of the dodo, PGCs from the Nicobar pigeon would be modified with dodo genes. After genetic editing, the modified PGCs would be inserted into chicken or pigeon embryos, creating birds carrying semi-dodo DNA. The goal is for these birds to produce offspring increasingly similar to the dodo, although it is recognized that it will never be an identical clone. However, despite the interesting idea, simultaneous editing of hundreds or thousands of genes to recreate dodo traits is highly complex. In addition, the process of cellular transformation in birds via PGCs is still experimental and faces significant technical limitations. The cave lion was a majestic Pleistocene predator, extinct more than 7,000 years ago, and today its possible scientific resurrection is debated. Cubs of these animals have been found almost intact in permafrost in the Yakutia region of Siberia, including fur, skin, and soft tissues. Another discovery includes a cub found in the Tirektik River, also an excellent preservation. Russian scientists, in collaboration with South Korean researchers, are exploring traditional cloning, although they recognize the difficulty of using living cells cells preserved for millennia. South Korean geneticist Hwang Woo Suk has expressed interest in using tissues from the cubs to attempt cloning, despite controversies about the amount of sample available. Although well-preserved, the remains still contain degraded DNA and not living cells, which limits traditional cloning. In recent cases with much more recent species, such as the Pyrenean ibex, extinct only 23 years ago, there was no success, which suggests even greater complexity for species older than 10,000 years. The cave bear is a magnificent Pleistocene plantigrade whose remains have revealed surprising genetic secrets. The cave bear lived until about 24,000 years ago, and its DNA, both mitochondrial and nuclear, was extracted from bones and teeth of specimens up to 360,000 years old, particularly from a petrous bone of the inner ear, with excellent preservation of genetic material. From this, researchers managed to recover valuable genomic sequences that allowed them to recalibrate the genetic mutation rate and rewrite the evolutionary history of bears. However, it is important to remember that ancient DNA is still fragmented and degraded, making it difficult to assemble complete functional genomes. There are no intact cells, only partial sequences, and consequently practical limitations for any de-extinction attempt. The steppe bison is another extinct species found in remarkable condition. Among these finds is the famous specimen Blue Babe, a frozen bison about 36,000 years old, found in Alaska, whose incredible preservation allowed in-depth anatomical studies. The steppe bison was an extinct, large bovid species that inhabited vast regions of Eurasia and North America during the Pleistocene and survived into the mid-Holocene. Blue Babe is an exceptionally preserved specimen found in Alaska in 1979. The Preservation included internal organs and tissues, enabling detailed studies on anatomy, parasites, and life history. In 2016, Russian and South Korean researchers reported the discovery of a steppe bison tail more than 8,000 years old in the Russian permafrost. The plan was to use this material to obtain DNA and advance techniques for cloning, using cloning of a wood bison as a first step, with a cow as a surrogate mother. However, as mentioned earlier in other cases, many experts are highly skeptical about the feasibility of cloning from ancient DNA. DNA, especially when the genetic material is highly fragmented. The Carolina parakeet was the only native parrot species of the eastern United States of America. It lived in large flocks and had a vast range, from the south of New England to Colorado and the Gulf of Mexico. The last captive specimen, named Incas, died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1918, and the species was officially declared extinct in 1939. Its extinction was abrupt, driven mainly by human actions, habitat destruction, intense hunting because of its plumes used in hats, and the fatal habit of returning to places where companions 
had died, facilitating mass slaughter. Researchers led internationally by Carla's Lalueza fox sequenced the species' complete genome from preserved samples with the help of the sun parakeet's DNA as a reference. The Carolina parakeet is among the species most cited in de-extinction discussions. The idea would be to edit the sun parakeet genome to make it resemble that of the Carolina parakeet. However, there are still many difficulties being evaluated and studied. The Carolina parakeet represents one of the most emblematic episodes in conservation biology in the United States of America, a vibrant bird that disappeared rapidly in the face of human expansion. Today, deepening genetic understanding of this extinction helps identify vulnerabilities in other threatened species. The emblematic giant ground sloth, named in honor of Charles Darwin, had its mitochondrial genome sequenced from bones about 13,000 years old, from which information from nuclear fragments was also obtained. These data confirm that this species diverged from today's two-toed sloths approximately 22 million years ago. An analysis published in the journal Science examined ancient DNA and more than 400 fossils, showing how terrestrial sloth lineages varied in size and shape over time. Because de-extinction methods, such as nuclear cloning require intact cells from the extinct organism, something non-existent for ancient giant sloths. Traditional cloning is not viable. In addition, there is a lack of living tissue samples, and there is no sufficiently close living relative that could serve as a surrogate mother. The giant ground sloth remains a fascinating chapter of Pleistocene megafauna. Despite the availability of ancient DNA and valuable genomic data, real de-extinction is currently unfeasible due to technical and biological limitations and are still incomplete knowledge of of the species. In 2025, the United States company Colossal Biosciences announced the birth of three pups, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, which, according to the company, are the first dire wolves since their extinction about 13,000 years ago. They used ancient DNA samples, specifically a tooth about 13,000 years old and a skull 72,000 years old, to identify about 20 key genes associated with traits such as white fur, robust build, body size, and musculature. Then these modifications were inserted into the genome of modern gray wolves, leading to the birth of pups as genetic hybrids with traits inspired by the dire wolf. Experts consider that the pups are not true dire wolves, but rather gray wolves genetically modified. Later, chief scientist Beth Shapiro admitted that the offspring are, in fact, gray wolves with 20 genetic edits, and that the term dire wolf was used more as a popular than a scientific label. The Javan tiger disappeared from the wild, but surprisingly, returned to scientific discussions. The Javan tiger inhabited the island of Java in Indonesia until the 1970s and was officially considered extinct in 2008 due to habitat destruction and intense hunting. Genetic studies of museum samples confirmed that it belongs to the same subspecies that included the Bali tiger and the Sumatran tiger, today grouped together. In 2019, a resident reported having sighted a possible tiger in West Java, footprints and a hair strand were collected. DNA analysis identified that this hair was strongly similar to that of museum specimens, rekindling the search for a living animal. However, this supposed evidence was challenged due to methodological problems and possible contamination, generating major debate among experts. The possibility that the Javan tiger still exists remains an intriguing but unproven mystery. The most viable alternative at present would be the introduction of Sumatran tigers as ecological substitutes, while working on restoring the original environment and carefully assessing the impact on already fragile ecosystems. The aurochs, the imposing wild ancestor of domestic cattle, roamed Eurasia and North Africa until its extinction in the 17th century. The aurochs was a massive bovine, considered the largest terrestrial mammal in Europe at the end of the last ice age. It reached up to two meters at the shoulder and could weigh more than one ton. Its last population died in 1627 in the Yaktoro forest in Poland. The animal was widely distributed across forests, steppes, and open plains and played a central role as an ecosystem engineer shaping landscapes through grazing and trampling. Projects such as the Toros program, led by the Taurus Foundation in the Netherlands, aim to recreate cattle with characteristics similar to the aurochs by selecting primitive cattle breeds that still carry ancestral traits. The program began in 2008 and has already resulted in several generations of these Toros, with the expectation of releasing robust herds into nature reserves in Europe. Don't forget to subscribe so you can watch more videos like this.